welcome to the starting point. <laughs> it took quite a while to <laughs> to be able to, to make it happen, but here we are. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. We're honored. Yeah. So let's see to begin with whom and where. <laughs> let's begin with you, Daniel, because sure. uh, you live in America, but your family name doesn't sound very American. What's behind your family name, French name? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm originally from England. I was born in, in England, um, not far from London, in a, little in a place called Kent. Mm -hmm. um, but my father, um, my background, my father's background is from Mauritius. Uh, but they moved to England. Um, my parents moved to England, even though they met there well over 50 years ago now. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, but uh, that's where my background is. My, my, my last name is French, and that's where I it see. comes from. So we have so a wonderful mixed family. So. And uh, your mother? My mother actually moved to England um, um, around similar times, 40, 50 years ago, but she actually was born in the Seychelles, oh. um, but they came to England and my father and mother actually met while in England, um, both working in the medical field and nursing at that time. Uh, and my um, mother moved to England because my grandfather, who was a pastor in the Seychelles and Mauritius at that time, um, came over um, um, at that point in, in, in his career as well. So you have quite a lot of French culture? Yeah, we have, um, our family is mixed, so we have Welsh, we have Dutch, oh. we <laughs> have, um, um, you know, English and, uh, and French as well. So our, when we gather together, there's a wonderful array of different um, cultures that have been infused in our family. But apparently you felt like uh, that was not enough <laughs> and you wanted to add something more to the, exactly. <laughs> to the melting pot of your <laughs> culture. And uh, well, well, we'll come to that. Yep. Uh, let's go ri right away. So Sierra, you are 100% American, I suppose. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> 100%, yeah. Yeah, but your first name is like Spanish. That's true. I, <laughs> you know, I never really asked about my first name where, <laughs> where it came from. I think my mom just liked it. The yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where have you been born in, in the United I'm States? I'm a native of Georgia. You're a native of Georgia. Born so and raised right you here. You feel at yeah. home here. Yeah. Around the city, the Atlanta? Or um, about an hour outside. North, north south? North, northeast. North. Um, northeast. Not far from here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Close to the mountains, a little bit? Um, we could see the mountains. You it's could from see a them. town, it's a small town called Winder, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, tell us a little bit about your family. Um, so, my mother's side uh, is Adventist, mm -hmm. um, and my father's side was not. So, growing up in that environment was a so little you different. Grew up, but you grew up in a Mixed family as far yeah, as religion. Yeah, yeah. But your father was a practicing Christian or not so? No, 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 no not at all. Was he op openly against religion or he was simply um, not interested? I think for him actually the struggle was more people. Uh -huh. um, it wasn't God per se. Yes, nah, yes. He, his, his upbringing was a little different and difficult. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure there was anger with God mm -hmm. at, a, at many points along the way. But I think there were certain circumstances in his life where he had attempted to um, be mm -hmm. part of the church and found them unwelcoming. And mm -hmm. so he had this feeling that many Christians are hypocritical. I see. Um, so there was kind of always that. Piece. So you have been quite early in life in the si situation to choose between two. I, yeah, I guess so. so. We, m my mother always raised us kids um, going to church and attending, mm -hmm. um, but that made Sabbaths interesting. We couldn't necessarily spend Sabbath as a family. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. But uh, father didn't try to. Take you no, away. No, 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 not at all. No. no. And I think when my parents got married, there was an understanding that that's... Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. An, uh, an agreement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you have also attended Adventist schools. I have. I have. I did um, grade school and then academy as well. 
And then I did Newbold College for a couple of years. Newbold? Yeah. Why Newbold? But uh, before of that, uh, you, you may know that uh, you have been in the same school uh, where my daughter, Sarah, yes, studied for I one year. Yep, I believe. She, she was, was in the third, third grade. grade. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 perfect memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like yesterday. <laughs> yeah. It was good for you to be in Adventist schools? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I always enjoyed it. And um, I was always very active as well in mm. student life. So, and my mother knew that that was my personality as well. So, and sports and different mm -hmm. things. So it made it much easier, that side made it much easier to be involved. Um, yeah, I really appreciated it. It made a lot of good friends. I'm still in touch with many of them and mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Let's uh, return to you, uh, Daniel. I was enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was not for the first time to hear that. <laughs> but you like hearing uh, listening like again and again, again, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so you you were already born in in UK, yeah. Yes, I was. So yes, born the in family UK. was already there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are not many, many Adventist schools in UK. What about your schooling? No, no there, I believe, I believe outside of a college and maybe one high school, there may be another yeah, one, yeah. one or two small ones, yeah, yeah. but there, is, there, are, there aren't any in, mm -hmm. outside of that. So my schooling was uh, very much um, public schools. Yes. Um, and then I went to an all boys school, um, Darfa Grammar School, a grammar school from mm -hmm. the age of 11 to 18. Um, it works differently, obviously, in the UK yeah, than it yeah, does yeah. in the US. And then I went to university in London and then did my PhD actually in Bristol. So I did all my education in, in, in non-Adventist institutions. Yes, and all yeah. in... Yeah. Uh, yeah. in uh, yeah. Oh, except in one year, so I did a little gap year in Cologne, France. Uh, you, you crossed the, yeah, the channel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my exposure. So that was an attempt to... to feel your French uh, roots uh, it, it, it to, was, you know, it to was brush up your French? Yeah, to a degree. But you know what it was more about? It was more actually about, I, when I, even my church life, I, there were no young people with me growing oh. up. So I, would, I went to a very small church. There was um, a good friend of mine um, who, um, she, she, she moved away from the church when she was in her teens. So I didn't have anybody of my age as a child growing up and growing up into my teens. And I always longed to have Adventist friends. I never knew what he looked like. And I remember seeing uh, sometimes um, some friends who came from America from the family and they'd talk about these schools and they'd have friends that they go to. And I was like, wow, that sounds amazing. So when I, was, uh, when I became 18, I said, you know, I asked mom and dad, is it possible if I could maybe go to Cologne for a year? Mm -hmm. And they were excited. And so I, I was for French, but it was more to actually meet some other young people who were Adventists, because I never had experienced that throughout my life. So I that's see. the reason. And, uh, were those expectations met? They were, and, and yeah. above and beyond. It's one of the best years I can imagine when I was that age of that period of my life. It's just Share with us one of the memories you have. I, from I think some of, the, <laughs> one of some of the amazing memories for me would be, um, we, I, for example, I had a, a room, Les Horizons. It was mm -hmm. a room, mm -hmm. um, you may know of it. Mm -hmm. And my room specifically, you could either look at the, the mountain behind the mountain. Which is Celeb, or you could look beyond to where Geneva. you have Geneva. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was Lake Geneva would be mm -hmm. in front of you. And so I remember being there with my roommate, or sometimes I'd have some friends would be around, and we would sit on my desk and we'd turn the lights off and we'd just talk. And we'd had the whole scene that night lit up with the Fantastic. mountains and the Alps. Fantastic. And it was just, you know, what, what better way? Good friendship, we're, you know, spiritual food and we're seeing the, 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 the mountains outside. So were you also, uh, you know, an adventurous person? Uh, have you been doing any paragliding <laughs> or things like that? On, um, on growing up in England, there's not as much of that yeah, going on. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> but I, I do like to, to play. So, you know, we did that a few times at Cologne, but even even being with Sierra and her family, her family are very adventurous. So, really? Um, we, yeah, they've I don't see any scars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all sorts of things with Sierra and her family. So, he uh, has them. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't always learn quickly. I'm just like, I want to be there. I want to be very good very quickly. And so I go too fast sometimes, whatever <laughs> I do. So, but yeah, I've learned to be adventurous for the <laughs> so, 
I see a mischievous smile on you. You're the, the, the boy of the family. <laughs> oh, I have two older brothers that You're led the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she, she has a dirt bike, so we've played on a dirt bike and, you know, well, he, cr he crashed. I crashed. He crashed. <laughs> <But> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you, yeah, you, you had an adventurous... Uh, yeah, Perfect. both of my parents, they we're very, an outdoor family, yeah. like that's mm. our favorite thing to do. So the, as I was saying before, we didn't always have like um, a lot of family time on Sabbath, mm -hmm. but the Sabbath, we did have family time. We would sometimes Nature. take, yes, mm. we would take time um, mm. and drive to the mountains mm. and, you know, that would be our Sabbath activity. We would maybe even, instead of church, we would go spend time with mm. my dad and um, because that was something we could do together Wonderful. and uh, yeah always outside always playing and my parents both were very very adventurous as well so it just sort of rubbed off on the rest of us so what were your plans at that time for you know a career or anything like that sorry what were what were you thinking at that time about your future life career work things like that oh <laughs> difficult question. Um, probably at that time in my life, I wanted to be president <laughs> of the United States. <laughs> really? Yeah, probably. Speak more probably. on that. Um, Are you a candidate? No. <laughs> no. 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 Since <laughs> you, you changed, changed your mind. <laughs> but I guess the sentiment. No, but uh, it's the first time I meet someone who <laughs> who was thinking of that. <laughs> uh, I'm curious. Speak yeah, more on probably. that. What, what made you think of that? Um, in, I think more the sentiment was w wanting to help build a better life for people. Oh, really? And you um, felt like you, you could? Well, I felt like I could try. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, so yeah. Could you be more specific in what ways life should be better? Uh, um, I think mostly what hit home for me and mm -hmm. why since I changed from, you know, desiring politics mm. to a different field mm. was um, seeing suffering and underprivilege and disadvantage and wanting to help and assist those. Have you been in close contact with such people? Um, Were they around you? Were, have you been involved as a child with that? No, not, not no, personally, not very personal. just no. watching no. the news and seeing I what see. goes on in the world. And I've been, I have been on one mission trip and Where? seeing Romania, actually. Romania? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When? Uh, this was... Five years, five years ago? Oh, 20, 2015? Oh, no, 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 not 14. as a child. 14. Not as a child. No, not the, as no. a child, no. no. No, 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 this is since then. But uh, as a child, it was probably just... Yeah, watching the news Idea and seeing idealistic uh, thinking, uh, seeing injustices caring. even at that time, yeah, bothered me. So, interesting. Yeah. So you you felt like something needs to be done. People yeah. shouldn't be allowed. I mean, left to yeah to 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 find their way out or yeah. not. Or yeah. and, uh, for how long do you think have you entertained uh, this idea of becoming the president? <laughs> <laughs> Um, with no no previous lady being in that office, and I, I mean it was revolutionary in many in many ways. Well, that was that that was also probably part of my desire at the time was ambition, and I'll be the first. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that was probably a pretty young, naive mm -hmm. age, I would say, maybe eleven since I was eleven. Well, I think when you start learning about the yeah, world yeah. and how but it works. But when, when you are 11, you don't think, ah, I am just a naive 11. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. You no, never I, been I, I, idealism, I thought. Yeah. Idealism, when you are 11, you've never been so mature before. <laughs> 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 yeah. And uh, do you think it came a time when you actively Discard it, discard the, the thought, or it was just little by little, you know, disappearing. Um, I suppose point. it was little by little. Little by little. The, the more education, the more mm -hmm. you see of the world, the more, mm -hmm. I guess, reality sets in, 
and I realized that maybe politics isn't the best place to mm -hmm. have hands-on um, work or be able to affect people. You can affect people one by one. Um, and so that's when I, I sort of decided I'd rather do humanitarian work and mm -hmm. study that instead. Yeah, so uh, at that time, I suppose you spoke about that with your parents or it was your little secret? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure I spoke about it with my but parents. You, it you was don't remember their reactions? Not, not specifically. For, ma they for many years, they thought I should be a lawyer because they thought my uh -huh. Arguing abilities <laughs> were great. <laughs> 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 or a lawyer or a veterinarian because I have a compassion for, yes, for, for animals. animals. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Or a lawyer for animals. A <laughs> lawyer for <laughs> yes, I could do that instead. I, I never thought I could be a, a, a veterinarian because I can't stand to see them animals mm -hmm. suffering. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. to suffering add seems to be a and to yeah. add to that <laughs> suffering for a moment yeah. to help them get better. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, but you don't remember your parents actively discouraging you or oh, uh, no. or making no, no, fun no. of you of no. your dreams. No, no. No. That's very interesting. In fact, I, my I, I remember my dad very specifically said, "Do it." Do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so returning to, to the spiritual aspects of your lives, um, for both of you, uh, so your, your family was united in faith. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, um, my father wasn't uh, Adventist until he met my mother. I and, um, see. When they were dating, my mm -hmm. mother kind of um, kind of gave him some things to read and my father studied some things out for himself and uh, uh, was baptized so before we were born the children mm -hmm. and they had he had become Adventist as well so but I think he also has some interesting facts even earlier in the family uh, uh, in oh. terms of well I know that uh, well my father's side was Catholic yes. all of his side and yes. then he, he became an Adventist when he met my mother but my yeah. mother's side was um, on Primarily, were, were always all Adventists. Mm -hmm. um, lots of pastors in the family. My grandfather was a pastor as well. So, um, so it was. And if you dig deeper in the past, uh, they have some some interesting religious connections. I think. Um, um, I, maybe we spoke about something. I can't remember. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> um, yes, <laughs> I know my grandfather was very active um, um, in the early church in the Seychelles and Mauritius, he was, he was very active and very passionate there. And, uh, Did you say he was the first pastor? I'm not sure if he was, um, but I know that he was very active, mm -hmm. very active there. So, um, <coughs> so yeah, so maybe that's, uh, maybe that's what we spoke about. When mm -hmm. we were, you know. Now, uh, you know, sometimes uh, teenagers, uh, they come to an age when uh, they doubt everything, they have many questions, or they don't, don't, they don't like people as your father, uh, church people, and things like that. Other, other young people, they have a smooth transition through those difficult years. How it was for you? Now, if you are going to tell me that you, you had a smooth path, I'm not going to have that ag to keep that against you. <laughs> 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 so I think, I think well, I, just, just from my perspective, I think, uh, um, I'm the youngest of my brother and sister. Um, I have a sister, so I'm the youngest. I'm a little brother, mm -hmm. um, and so my sister's five years older than me. So when she she moved away, when you know she went to college, university, yeah. and so forth, I was still at home. And um, for me, the the, ch the teenage years, uh, from a spiritual perspective, was one of um, when I look back was was not uh, a difficult time, yeah. but it was one when I look back, I, I realize of keeping the status quo makes mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. we would go to church on sabbath mm -hmm. and it was it was nice you know it was wonderful it was it was familiar um i got baptized around 11 and then mm -hmm. i um you know we you know just there was nothing that was you know overtly kind of different but i realized even that after i went for collange and then after i went to university after collange so 18 19 when i got back that i began to um you know, through those teenage years, even though I, n there wasn't any big 
big issue, so to speak, of, of faith crisis, yes, yes. I know that I probably wasn't as close to my walk with God because when I was at university, um, I, my walk became a lot further away, if that makes sense. And mm -hmm. I you know, stepped away a little bit from, from, that, from that course mm -hmm. um, at, at that time because um, for many reasons, but I know at that time it was my, my own struggle of, you know, me having to understand and make the decision for God myself, as opposed to following, well, every week we go to church and the sure. family gets together. Now it's really my choice and decision. And it was in that time that I felt that, you know, when I look back, I know that Satan was actively working hard mm -hmm. to make sure that I didn't make a decision for God, but made a decision for everything else that the world had to offer. And uh, so, yeah, it was a, you know, that's a, a, an interesting point in my life when I look back now that, um, and I'm glad that God brought me Sure. So it was a gradual, uh, mm, how to say, cooling down. Yeah. yeah. But uh, then it was also a gradual warming up, or it yeah. was an event uh, to trigger a more dramatic uh, return. How how it was the the way back, or the way to a better, to yeah. a better faith. No, I, I I'm glad you asked that because a lot mm. of times you you know some people say where well, was this you know this this major event and yes. then. I Something. turned and that's the testimony. Yes. And sometimes I think like, oh, maybe, maybe I don't have value in my, in, my, <laughs> in my testimony. But I realize that there is value there because there are many of those who will follow the same path, who you will, you will go to church and it will just be there. It will be there. It becomes almost tradition. You, you, know, you, you do the things that you need to do on Sabbath and, and, you know, and, it's, and it's wonderful and it makes you feel good, yeah. but you really haven't made that decision. Yes. Um, kind of cultural. Cultural, cultural. that's it. Yeah. And, um, and I think the cooling down, what happened is that I knew that at, at a, I was in my early mid-twenties and um, maybe just a little bit later in my mid-twenties and I realized I had, um, that I, I wanted to spend more time being with other young people in church. I, mm. I knew that much, even though I wasn't necessarily in church at that point. And uh, it was then that I got a, 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 an offer to, to come to the United States to come ah, and actually, to United States. yeah, to come and teach at university here mm -hmm. and uh, do some research. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, then, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, and I was actually looking for churches that had young people when I was like, oh, maybe I can find a church in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I found one in Atlanta and, uh, um, and I, and I got excited about the prospect because something was kind of taking me, maybe this could bring me back. So somehow I knew that even though I wasn't necessarily in church anymore, that I needed to, to, mm -hmm. to have that. And uh, when I came, and uh, it, that really was the beginning of the turning point. And, yes. and that was, even though it, it may be a little bit of a gradual warming up, but it was a turning point because I began to um, attend church in a regular fashion, but now I had people who were my own age who I can now, you know, converse about spiritual things. And for me, um, I don't want to, I want you to be able to talk, so I don't want to talk, but for <laughs> me specifically, what was interesting is that a, a big turning point that perhaps we can talk about l later is that about three or four years into, you know, being here in Atlanta and, and beginning to really come back to church and, and have the friendships and have a stronger walk with Christ, I was asked to do an evangelistic series. Really? And um, it is that evangelistic series where for me was specifically a turning point in my spiritual walk hmm. because I, I, I understood the Bible now in, the sto in its story, in its context, hmm. all of our doctrines within its context. And for me, that was a big pivotal moment and that changed a lot of my life and has changed, has changed since. Redefining hmm. God's character and understanding. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I mean, you, you said it, we, we, we went through that together because we, really? we were married at that point. You were married already. We were married and it hmm. was in that, it was in that, that evangelistic series where as Sierra said, it was, it was, it was having a brand new picture of who God is and, and being excited about that and being able to maybe teach that to other people. That's what really began to drive, drive me. So you were asked to, to preach in that series or to organize or to? Yeah, to, so we were organizing as a young adult group, we were organizing a series. Mm -hmm. And then um, my best friend, um, Greg, who I think you've interviewed him. Yes, actually, I did. Um, came and spoke to me and said, listen, we'd like you to present the series um, mm. at this point I'd been preaching you know here and there and that had been fulfilling and I said okay and then I let me think and pray about it and I just felt this is what a wonderful opportunity so I went and prepared the series and um, I think it ran over maybe a week mm. or, or two two weeks or I can't remember like that it mm. was it was yeah. a, and uh, you know and prepared each sermon each series and really it was all about 
helping people redefine the picture of God in your mind mm -hmm. and uh, understanding that God is a God who loves you deeply um, and that Satan is working hard to, you know, to, uh, to ensure that that character and that picture you have of him is one that is completely you know, different to what yes, yes. the Bible says that he is. And mm. when you begin to see him in the right light, then the other components come together. And that was a defining moment and I, yes, for me yes. personally in my walk. It's yeah. so about you, Sierra. Your, your path, my path from uh, childhood faith to mature faith. I would also say it was smooth. Mm -hmm. um, I never really had doubts about God or mm -hmm. my belief in Him. And I think probably going to Adventist school, it, it helps because everyone around yes. you ha is, is similar. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess when I got to college, it becomes your own decision, yes. like going to church and your spiritual walk. D like, like Daniel said, when you're younger, when you're at home, it's something that you do. And I was never upset about it, I enjoyed it, but it's just, it's what you do, it's the culture. It's, but once I went to college, then it's, it's my own decision. Yes. Um, my spiritual walk is my responsibility. And so it began to, to grow there. Um, but I would still say the same thing. It was more coming back. Uh, once I had come back to the States and I was really involved with the church that I was going to um, before, but I realized that I was significantly younger than a lot of my friends and they were beginning to have kids and I was still in my early 20s. They were in their mid 30s. And so I knew that as their life was changing, I was going to need more people my own age mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And so I actually went to the church that he was already attending and met him on my first Sabbath. The first there. Sabbath. First Sabbath there. Fa faithful <laughs> yeah. Sabbath. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very um, interesting. Listening to, to you, I was thinking if at this time, at this time, someone like you would come to our church because yeah, we, we are part of the same church we now. Are, yeah. yeah. Or do they have the same experience? Or is our church providing to young people as you were at that time uh, uh, seekers in a way of, of you know, a real, a real warm, uh, youthful uh, faith experience? Are we able to provide the same to possible visitors like you? I, I think if my answer, and you maybe jump in, I, kn I know the young adult group is still very active mm -hmm. now, and, I, and, and the makeup so. changes, you yeah. know, so you get maybe there's more college age versus more mm -hmm. young professionals. Now they have a, a little mix. I know that there is a strong spiritual, and I think what's been wonderful in the church that we go to is that the young adult group has been a consistent um, standard of strong yes. kind of spiritual direction from wonderful. the beginning. And I think that's that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And if you had anything to add No, on it's the same yeah. because I came into the same yeah. young adult group. And uh, for those that are truly seeking and yeah. desiring to grow, it's y mm -hmm. you'll find it. And that's yeah. the key, truly seeking and desiring. I think that's yeah, the key. if you're looking for entertainment or a social club, mm -hmm. then... Probably yeah. not the best. Uh, we, we need to, to yeah. move forward <laughs> a little bit uh, faster. So you met uh, at Atlanta North Church. Yep. The first yes. you, you were already there for a while. You observed him in the first Sabbath going uh, there. He observed you. Yeah. It was a magical well, uh, apparently he observed me before yeah. I observed him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he came in late. And came late. <laughs> it was very late. I was with my best friend. Um, and it's funny, she, my best friend actually introduced us. Yes. Um, I had recently, probably within the last year, I had come back from England. And I had come back to this, the same place I'd always been, the same house, the same city. And I was a little bit down about just being back to the mm -hmm. same life. And mm -hmm. um, my friend met Daniel and she came, she said, Sierra, come meet Daniel, he's British. <laughs> she thought it would, you know, cheer me up to have someone from England. Well, um, small island. Yeah. <laughs> <from there. laughs> yeah, and the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, history. How long it took for you to become close friends and then to um, 
So because of the young adult group, we started hanging mm -hmm. out or spending time together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in a group. Yeah. Um, I, I attended and then a couple months later, we started hanging out and spending more time mm -hmm. as a group. And then for he and I specifically, it was probably about six months before like, mm -hmm. It was the two of us spending mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. consistent time and together. To the marriage? Uh, we got engaged a um, a year before we got married. So yeah, so yeah. we dated for a year, mm -hmm. got engaged. just under a year, and yeah. then got engaged for a full year. Wonderful. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the meantime, you built your careers. What what about you? Yeah. So when we met, I was in banking. Um, I was a risk management officer at a bank, so overall the sort of internal financial risk and reporting mm -hmm. and dealing with um, auditors, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, during the crash, I had lost my job around 2009, I think, mm -hmm. 2010. Yeah. And um, he was working at AT&T and mm -hmm. told his boss, my wife is in finance and accounting and um, we so needed, we needed someone at that point mm -hmm. yeah so they needed someone to manage the budget for their organization mm -hmm. so I was hired on pretty quickly mm. uh, without even an interview mm -hmm. <laughs> right. actually I think you gave your, you gave your resume on Friday yeah and Monday she started I was Monday <laughs> which actually speaks to his character <laughs> um, it, it does because you know she took his word for it and so I was there for six years, six years, mm -hmm. um, doing the finances for the organization. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then more recently, we have our own company and I've been doing the financial mm -hmm. sort of business side of our company. So. What about you, Daniel? Um, I guess quickly, you know, my, you know, I came here originally um, as part of my career. That was the reason I came. I, my background's in the field of human computer interaction, and it's all about designing systems and products that match the way the brain works. Mm -hmm. It's a mixture of neuroscience, uh, technology mm -hmm. um, that come together. So actually, my background's actually in aviation, so if you ever fly, the flight deck of an aircraft has been designed by what's been called human factor specialists. There are people like me who have spent time designing the flight deck, the way the, everything works, so that the human pilot can ensure that they can optimize the way they work with it and make less errors um, because you have to work for the limitations of the brain, even though the brain is wonderful. When you have all these technology systems, you have to work that way. So that that's, <laughs> that's fascinating yeah. for me. So I have <laughs> been, from my childhood, very passionate about planes. Yeah, me flying. too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe we speak more on that <laughs> on another occasion. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, and, and, that, and that essentially developed into my career of applying that same idea. So when I came, I came to teach at Georgia Tech. I was working on some specific projects with NASA and mm -hmm. in the same field. And then when I finished at Georgia Tech and we were getting to know each other, um, I was like, oh, maybe I should find a, another position and maybe stay in America for a little bit longer mm -hmm. so I can spend time with Sierra. Mm -hmm. And at t came up and it's the same. There I was applying the same idea, but here you're, de you're designing digital um, experiences and interfaces, mm -hmm. um, whether it's phone, web, and so forth, and it's, again, thinking about how the human can interact with that. And so that's been my trajectory of, of just kind of doing these pieces and applying that through different industries. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So in a way, you also learn from uh, flight incidents and yeah. accidents Absolutely. a lot because you analyze the yeah. what went wrong. Yeah. Most of the time, several things, many things many went things. wrong, yeah. and you have to, to sort out what what should be done. So uh, this big controversy at this time with uh, the 737 Max is, I think, is very significant to very you. Very interesting. It's yeah. a, it's a perfect example there, mm -hmm. of, and that's not so much the human error, mm -hmm. but it's if a system doesn't speak correctly mm -hmm. um, and do what it's supposed to do, then then when the human interacts, you then get a, a you know a mismatch. And, mm. uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's fascinating. And you can apply that. I've, I've always been interested in people, how people work. Mm -hmm. But I've been like just yourself. I love airplanes. I love things. I just, <laughs> you know, it's so for me, I, putting the two together was a, was a blessing in, in, in many respects. So. For the time remaining, yeah. because time goes fast. I know. <laughs> yeah. We are going to 
to go a little deeper in another area of your life. Yeah. Uh, our viewers don't know that, but uh, I've been pursuing you for maybe two years, I think, oh, to have this seen. interview almost, yeah? And uh, at least once or twice, there have been some health issues preventing you from attending at the last moment. And I think it was about you, Daniel. Yeah. Um, what happened to you? Yeah, um, and you're right, Ashley, we've, we've been excited, we've been honored to be invited and I, and I felt sorry we both have that we haven't been able to make it because no, of health. I, I, <laughs> I don't want to... to no, no. Yeah, but it, it's just a bridge to... to yeah, it's a good that. bridge. You know, <laughs> and I know you were fill in, but you know, you know, in the midst of all this, as we talk about how God is blessed and is blessing and continues to bless, you know, I was very focused on you know, once I left at and I went to work for Delta Airlines, so back in aviation, um, and I was busy and, um, you know, often working a lot um, and just being involved in work. And uh, it was at my, my time at Delta Airlines, um, this is about three years ago now, um, I was in a meeting. I was there with the officers of the company, so mm -hmm. it, was a, it, was a, it was an important meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and I just felt very unwell halfway through the meeting. Um, but I managed to make it to the end of the meeting and I um, managed to go back to my office and I closed the door and I had such terrible vertigo and, and just, I couldn't even stand. I, mm. I basically had to somehow keep myself steady and mm. I was on the floor and uh, I made it to the car outside in the, in the parking area and I called Sierra and I said, I think I can drive, I'm gonna try and drive. <laughs> And she which told I me, said absolutely she not. She said me not. She said <laughs> I, I wasn't. She told me I was slow in my speech and I was not in a good mm. in a good way. So I. Do you remember? Of course. Oh, yeah. 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 How it was for you yeah. to hear that? Yeah. Um, at at the time, because he said he was really dizzy, and it was, it was very impactful for me actually because I had lost my dad to um, uh, cerebral aneurysm. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so hearing that he was quite sick he was vomiting and dizzy and hearing him on the phone and a little slurred speech you, you made a connection uh, yeah my brain just kept going and i i called him several times i remember he i, I was thinking to call 911 to just go get him but i continued to ask him if he had a headache and he said mm -hmm. there was no pain mm -hmm. and so i said i would go mm -hmm. get him i I will come, but I called, I remember, it was probably frustrating for him. I called him numerous times on the way saying, do you have a headache? Do you have a headache? He never, he said he never had any pain. So once I got there, I still took him to the emergency mm -hmm. room. Um, yeah. But by the time I got there, he was quite in, incoherent. And mm -hmm. I mean, not, he was still conscious, but it, it wasn't making a lot of sense and i definitely had to assist him from one car to the other mm. um yeah. yeah so it was it was it was, it was, it was a little frightening yeah, but a little <laughs> a lot <laughs> he kept telling me he didn't have a headache and he was still with me so <laughs> they, yeah, they found so out it, oh yes yeah no did they and they found out that it was uh so i had an inflamed nerve i guess my and it's called vestibular laventitis mm -hmm. and um yeah as a result of that, um, I've lost most of my hearing in that ear. It knocks out the vestibular system mm -hmm. as well, yeah. so balance. Balance. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So he was very dizzy for a long time, wasn't walking, you know, yeah. great. Yeah, I remember you were seeing with a cane and I was shocked. Uh, yes, and that was related to two other things. That actually. was a different thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that was the beginning, really, of, yeah. of the health problems. And so I thought, you know, it's, you know, you know, I, I still live with this noise. I said, oh, you know, it'd be okay. You know, we managed to get through it. And, but it was, what was powerful with that is that it was, I remember coming home even, I went back to work mm -hmm. a week later or so. And because I just started my job. Mm. So I was building a team. I was expected to, to lead. I was expected to do things. And so I had, I felt pressure. So I went back to work and, you know, and I remember coming home more than once and just, and this is where sometimes when you know you see people and people I was exp have I told you you know you you, you know at church they're, mm -hmm. they're okay they have a but uh, sometimes in their quiet moments they struggle and I came home and I said to see how the noise in my ear I just, I just felt sick I felt I just felt terrible and I remember getting on my knees and crying 
praying this year and just asking God, so I don't know why, mm. um, but I struggle to sleep in general. And I said, of all things, Lord, you know that, you know, the noise I can't is worse now. You know, you know I can't sleep in general. Why do mm. I even have a noise? If you, I, I'll take something else. Give me something else, <laughs> anything, so that I can, I can sleep. And, um, and I, um, there's a lesson in, 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 I think, coming out of this. But it, it, it was a struggle, and it was the beginning of struggles, because I pushed myself. I went back to work, and I pushed myself. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if you want to, I mean, if you want to fill in the next part. But, I, I, yeah, I pushed myself back at work, and mm-hmm. a year later or so, um, I began to um, get my joints would swell, and you mm. saw you saw me with a cane. And I was like, mm. "Why are my joints swelling?" <laughs> um, you know, we weren't sure what it was, um, and um, that was probably another sign of my body not liking what's happening right now. Mm. And yeah. then, um, you know, about 2016, I think um, I um, was actually at Walla Walla University helping them out with a lecture. Or mm-hmm. something. I went out there to visit them, mm-hmm. and I, I taught a class mm-hmm. just for. And then we were actually walking back from that class in the evening. And the I was, school of engineering. Or? Uh, it was a mixed. It was mm-hmm. engineering. It was psychology. design and mm-hmm. um, psychology. So oh. it was, a, it was a, all of them came together mm-hmm. for. It was just a one-off thing. Mm-hmm. They had asked me to come visit them, so I came out. Then I was walking back from there um, to the room that they had provided for us, and I had pain and. So I was like, oh, that's a bit unusual. And it was that pain in your throat, Pain I in think. my throat. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, you know, but it's like when I would walk. And so yeah. um, she said, we should probably get checked out. I was like, I'm fine. Just, you know, it could be something else. I need to get checked out. And then we went. And then in January, it was, this was late November. And then in January of the following year, 2017, she said, we are going to the doctors. And I said, we had gone hiking again. And um, he was having this pain in his yeah. throat. And he said he needed to slow down walking. And when it when he would slow down, the pain would ease. Mm-hmm. So I just said that's not normal. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we needed to go get it checked out. Yeah. Um, so we went to our GP, and we were describing the symptoms. Would you like to tell this part? No, no, no. We were dis- basically <laughs> describing the symptoms to her, and she said she thought she w- he was experiencing angina. Hmm. Um, to which we thought, no, that can't possibly. It can't, I mean, look at him. He's hmm. healthy. He's, you know, young. He was 37, 36, like 36, 37 at the time. Mm-hmm. Like, we just thought, absolutely not. That's not the case. But she stepped out. She said, I'm going to go call a cardiologist. Hmm. And we could actually hear her outside the door. And she said, I just told them it's his heart. And they, they seem calm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, should we not be calm? <laughs> um, but at the time, we're just, abs- you know, that's not what it is. It's not what it is. But went to see a cardiologist, stress test, stress test came out, adverse results. Mm-hmm. Went to get a, a heart cath um, and found out, yeah, he has four significant blockages right around his heart. Um, mm, significant to the degree of, what are they? they are. There's four and the two are 80 percent blockages and two are 90 percent blockages 90 percent um but um there is a testimony that god is you know he's looking out for us because the doctor told us that with your situation because it's a very particular genetic um, caused by genetics where it it doesn't present symptoms and they Mm -hmm. said usually the first sign is a heart attack um, but we had a sign beforehand and were able to at least um, jump on it and make the changes that were necessary. And yeah. at, that, at that time, you also made another connection because you told me that some of your close acquaintances. Been yeah, um, about a week before hmm. we found out with his, another friend of mine had lost her husband suddenly to a heart attack, young as well, but he was in his 20s. And um, very similar, just lost. You want to say something? No, no, I just said it was, it was, it was, that was the real, and it was a whole host of where they, I had different drugs for different things, and even one of the drugs caused, um, I had inflammation going on. I was on so many different drugs, they gave me one that 
caused um, me to have even something small. It sounds silly, but it was hiccups. But the hiccups went on for five, five days. days. And it's just convulsed, convulsed, convulsed to a point of where you just, you don't know what to do anymore. And uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a time of just. That was the first time I actually broke down and cried. <laughs> like because it watching was him because there was no sleeping daytime nighttime and mm. we're I, I mean like these hiccups were convulsions mm. really hard they looked painful yeah. and there's nothing to stop them mm. um, and so we went we were back into the emergency room and because I developed rashes and all sorts of things because too many <laughs> drugs <laughs> get in my system and learning about them and yeah it was a it was a, a turning point even at that point of just we could not control anything and we had to depend on God for all that we Well, had. and mm. that's the thing is the doctors, they can tell you what's happening, but not why. Yeah. It, with us specifically, with yeah. him specifically. So uh, even now you don't know it's, gen or you know it's genetic or it's there's, acquired? There's, a particular, there's one particular genetic component they think is playing a part, but they don't know much about that, even mm -hmm. though it's now identified. Um, the industry, medical industry is still learning about it. There's no medication specifically yeah. for that thing mm. to help lower it. So but um, we, uh, w by the grace of God, you know, we uh, just to be, I, you know, I know time is of the essence with us, but I know even just, we are trying, we have, you know, there are different options presented. There was surgery, there's, there's all these things they told us, though, so they won't prolong your life. It will just, it will just provide a, a way for now to. There's symptom relief. Symptom relief. Symptom mm. relief. So we've been on the journey, um, we've been at the Mayo Clinic, We've been to the Cleveland Clinic. We, uh, mm. I am completely plant-based, doing lots of things, oil-free, mm. to help exercise. Exercise to help kind of maintain a condition. So sometimes, even though you know, and I, and I struggle sometimes because I'm, I feel unwell, but I don't want to show people I feel unwell. But mm. I feel unwell, and you know, I don't, I don't want that to stop me. Uh, but it does stop me, even you know, from doing some things I'd like to do. Like, like. I don't, sometimes I, I, before all this, I would do, I would be involved in so very many things. Very energetic. Very and energetic. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest dampening has been the energy and it's caused me to slow down. And when you have low energy, then that causes you to be, sometimes you get a little bit sad and sometimes you're, you know, you get a bit low mentally and, mm -hmm. um, and, that effect, and then I get upset because I'm a bit low mentally. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, it's a, but down, it, in a down scenario, spiral. spiral. Um, but if anything, it has, and I, I just want to say this, and I, and, I, and I truly say this, in the midst of the struggle, being able to sometimes be open and vulnerable about the struggle, because there are others who are worse off, there are others who are going through terrible things, but being able to share that we, we still see how God is working. Um, mm. And if I, if I may be permitted, if there's time, just to share one story of that. Yes, I remember coming out of, we were seeing the pulmonologist, because I have breathing issues as well, I'm not sure what's happening there. <laughs> <laughs> that's another thing coming out the pulmonologist and um the specialist there and i was discouraged because we weren't getting any good news about what we could do um and he's recommending we do this and do that um and so i was discouraged and i came out and i and i he had told me i need to go make an appointment for the next visit so i went out and i went to the desk and there were three ladies standing there and um, sitting there at their desks waiting to make appointments and I went to the middle lady, I just picked a lady, I went and sat with her. And I'm feeling discouraged at this point. I said, oh, I'm here to make an appointment. And she said, oh, okay, I can help you out. So she began to type away. And I saw next to her computer, a Bible. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I don't know, I just felt impressed. I was like, I see you have a Bible there. <laughs> you, know, you know, just, I wanted to talk to anybody that's something different. And, she, and I said, what is it, you know, I, you know are, you, are you reading something? And she looked at me and said, well, and then she said, and she pulled out a card and she said, I'm actually trying to write a card to my son um, to give him encouragement because he's back in rehab after, because he's a, he's a drug addict and he's mm. gone back to rehab. And I'm trying to help him understand, you know, that it's okay. And she said to me, but I'm trying to find a verse. <laughs> and I cannot find the verse. <laughs> and it's in the book of Philippians. Oh, and oh. I said, is it Philippians 4 verse 19? <laughs> that my God will take care of all your needs <laughs> through the glorious riches of Christ Jesus. And she looked at me and she began to cry. <laughs> and I began to cry because she was crying. <laughs> Sierra wasn't with me. She'd gone to the restroom. She came back. She saw what was happening. <laughs> and she began to cry. I didn't know what was going on. But <laughs> she began to cry. They were crying, so I started crying. <laughs> but it was in the midst of all that, even when you feel pain, even when you go through something and you feel discouraged, to see God 
work in that way to mm. see say listen i have you and the miracle isn't going to be you necessarily being cured the way i'm going to show you that i'm around is by helping seeing you help showing you that you're going to be helping somebody else mm. and for me that has been one of the most powerful impacts of going through this and I don't. Want to, I know you need to talk, and we we're at time. But I just, I wanted to share that because that's sure. it was powerful. No, it's mm. it is it's true what he's saying, and I think this whole experience um, has helped us to grow, and it definitely um, helps you to understand the struggles that are in the Bible, yes. and where yes. they all you see their struggles and their growth, mm. and you can really understand firsthand what trial does and what it, it it forces you to either give up or grow yeah 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 and um we are so used to the bible stories yeah and, uh, we also read we, we, we come to read them without almost any emotion because we know the outcome we know That's all it. the interpretations of the dissecting of everything yeah. and uh, yeah, it's quite theoretical but when, when you are in kind of a similar situation it's probably totally, totally different. You also yeah. put your, uh, your feelings and your thoughts at, at one point in a, in a piece, in an article. Mm. Tell I us did. a little bit about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so the article was specifically about a flight mm -hmm. that we had been on that was, um, we were had to fly through or around or a hurricane and I'm a very relaxed flyer. I enjoy flying, mm -hmm. but this particular one was um, felt much more like falling than flying. And <laughs> um, I was exhausted. I really wanted to sleep. And so I laid down, I said a prayer. And in the middle of my prayer, I started it just uh, the story of when Christ was uh, sorry, the disciples were in the storm mm -hmm. on the ship and Christ was sleeping in the bottom. And I, I sort of heard in a way of like, this is God talking directly to me while mm -hmm. I'm praying. Like, I s was sleeping during the storm. Mm -hmm. He had so much faith in his father. He wasn't worried at all. The disciples were, you know, the ones, I was acting like one of the disciples. <laughs> and what Christ, when he woke up, he said to them, why are you still afraid? And for me, that was, it, it was directly speaking to me, not yeah. just in that moment, but throughout the whole storm of this health um, crisis and mini Job mm -hmm. experience that mm -hmm. we were going through yeah, yeah. is just, we had seen so many times where Christ was leading. And I think that's one of the things I'm passionate about, like you mm -hmm. said, like, testifying when you're still in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, because we often hear testimonies of once people have overcome. Yes, yes. And it's amazing, they are inspiring. But what about those who are still, still in the middle? There are things that you can find, you can point back and identify mm -hmm. where Christ is leading. Mm -hmm. Still struggling, but testify. Like, testify where you're, when you're still struggling. Yes having no idea about the outcome. Yeah, we still, we still don't have an outcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Uh, Daniel, you, you preach once in a while and uh, probably you do that uh, now. Let me ask you something. Uh, you know, in the Bible there are plenty of uh, healing miracles, yeah. both in the Old and the New Testament. and. Probably once in a while you preached about uh, them. Uh, in your current condition, um, do you continue preaching about uh, them or you avoid uh, them because <laughs> you are not healed, though, obviously? And so, <laughs> um, I, I still, I, I, def, I, I preach about them still because I think. You know, you think about Paul when I know he, you know, the thorn on Paul's side, so speaking, that there was something there that was consistent. I think the, the demonstration even of God in that moment when we encounter that woman who was making the appointment and just shows the, the ways in which God works. That isn't always the traditional, you are healed mm. in this way, but maybe he was healing me in a different way in terms of my spiritual mm. walk. And we've talked about that. The healing is not just simply physical. It's spiritual. There is a spiritual healing. And 
so when I when I preach about the, these things, I there's an emphasis there on a God who intimately knows and is aware of every pain and is a not just a companion. He 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 walks and he's he understands it to a degree that we cannot understand, even in the compassion that we have for other people. And uh, it's there's a physical component of that, but for me, more than anything else, I desire a spiritual healing, a spiritual mm-hmm. connection walk that is stronger. And so I think, yes, it, it is still things that we are going through. Because, you know, at the time as well, when it was the health, we we lost our house. Uh, well, we not lost our house. We had to move out immediately, mm-hmm. and we lost the job. We both lost and our both jobs. both lost the jobs within three weeks of each other. And, <laughs> and so it was... It wasn't just like a storm and a hurricane right then in that point when the and, the and the health crisis came at that point. Anything that we had or that normal people have to rely on mm-hmm. for security, health, home, yeah. jobs, gone. gone. Yeah. And so, um, but in fact, what it, what it did, yes, there were these moments of crying in these personal times when you're just on your knees, but I realized as I look back, because I still have to be on my knees, I'm still in that struggle sometimes, it's all part of that strengthening walk that really has allows me to see a, a different and even deeper picture of who God is. And I think that's, Wonderful. yeah, it's, yeah. Sira, last question. Uh, you mentioned uh, you've been to Romania. I think it was already in the, you're al- already in the midst of all of that, or it was just before? That was before. Um, just before. So oh, yeah. you have been with uh, Lisa? And, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So a few a few words about that. Um, that was, it was a really good experience. Actually, he did a lot of preaching as well there. Yeah. Um, you did your series. Yeah. A different was it series. A different series? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he and Greg had worked on a series together. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, a, it was a beautiful experience. I think you have been in the middle of the winter. Well, it was it was summer. 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 It was summer. Oh, which summer. Yeah, maybe yeah, because worse. I, I ask you about strawberries and things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe worse. Yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> maybe worse. <laughs> it was it was very warm. <laughs> but uh, it was it was a wonderful experience, and to be able to yeah have hands on, feel like you are helping. Yeah, absolutely. Something. Absolutely. Yeah. In small villages. And yes, yeah. yes, I know the place. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you so much. I, I really hope Daniel will uh, have you back yes. with uh, po- probably some of your colleagues to to discuss about your current work for uh, Adventist Review mm-hmm. TV. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we are better friends now <laughs> and uh, praying for each other. Thank you waiting so much. eagerly to see what God is going to do. Mm-hmm. Thank you Thank so you. much. God Thank bless. you for the invitation. God bless. Thank you.